Hi, today I want to share with you a beautiful game of Ding Liren, current world chess champion. He played this game with black and he was really strong. This game is magnificent, interesting, beautiful. And I can bet that if you will stay till to the end of this video, you will definitely improve your positional understanding with help of my comments on this game. My name is Pavel Martinov. I welcome you to my YouTube channel and let's start. Ding played black against stronger master Ernesto Inarque. So the classical Spain was on the board. And here, white preferred to play a4, the anti martial c3, d5 is the main line, the martial attack. So b4, d4, d6, takes only five. Here, to take with the pawn is also common, but Ding prefers to take with the knight. I don't want to cover so much the opening stage. Let's go to the middle game. So, queen f3, bishop c5. I think that's the first interesting moment because it's very natural to play bishop b7, but rook d1 can appear and it's hard to find a good place for this queen on the board. The idea of bishop c5 that after rook d1 we can push the queen on e7 on a good field and we are saving the possibility of bishop b7. So it's like a thin moment but uh, basically quite interesting strategically. So h3, white wants to cover the g4 square against the bishop, so bishop b7, knight d2. And here, first critical moment. So black almost finished the development and they need to find a plan, a strategy, what to do and how to do. So what can we see from the position? Firstly, we can see that black have advantage in the development because these pieces, they are not actually in the game. But if white will transpose the knight, for example, like this, or for example, from c4 to e3, at some cases they then ca they can count to an advantage. Actually, the bishop can come to uh, g5 to make this uncomfortable pin. So black needs to hurry up and where to play. The queen side is not the area where black can play because they have uh, some weaknesses here, like c4 square is a weak square for black. At some cases, white can push a5 to make these pawns uh, unbalanced uh, and they can't be connected after this between themselves and there can be some weaknesses in the end game so the center is quite stable right now and uh, according to this we need to go to play on the flanks and here it's possible to play on the king side but how to do it we need to pay attention for this tension between the pieces if the e4 pound we will drop from the board bishop can take on f3 and all such tensions, they are not definitely good for the strong pieces as queen here. And Ding underlined this and started. King goes to h8. A very thin move because at some variations he wants to prepare f5 using again this tension. And he is avoiding the spin because the king is no longer on g8 and the pawn from f7 can move up. So for example, in the variation like c3 here, black can play knight takes e4. And knight takes e4, f5. So here is the pin, and we just want to take uh, on e4. And here can be some interesting variations, like knight takes e5, we should take f3, knight e6, double attack to the rook and to the uh, queen, queen h4, for example, or even queen d6 here is also interesting, like this position can appear some weird computer stuff like that, so we should be seven knight g5 and i believe because the uh, white king is quite quite dangerous here the diagonal is really open the rook can come to f8 with the idea of rook f6 rook g6 at some points mm, that can be very dangerous for white even so after knight e6 queen h4 is also possible queen, uh, rook, uh, knight takes f8 i'm sorry uh here like bishop takes g2 can be knight g6 for example h takes g6 the idea is to have this part on g6 so black can't make this rook maneuver so king's g2 like maybe e4 here the pawns are coming as well the rook can connect them the king is quite open but by the material white are really good pair of bishops and the brooks so this position is really unclear but actually that's showing us that king h8 brings new possibilities for black in the game, White decided to play Queen G3. It looks uh, natural because White wants to skip this tension from the F3 square, but again, it's too slow. I mean, we spoke about the advantage of the development for Black, and it's too slow. Queen is 7 protecting the pawn on E5, and here some moves um, can be for White, but basically, I just want to bring the rook 
and you have a good position it's hard to go out with a knight because we need to protect the e4 pawn so in the game white made a mistake they played queen h4 it looks a bit strange actually just because white uh spending too much time for queen moves and here ding found a magnificent idea you can stop the video and try to fight it by yourself but basically he changed the plan but he changed the plan a bit and he used the bad position of the queen g5 and after this move, white's position are really very bad. So basically, black idea is to unlock the lines to push g4 in some case as well. So logical to take on g5, rook g8, queen f5, and rook g7. And in that position, it's really hard to defend against rooks goes to g8, double rooks on the g line. And even g3 is not saving white because I have a pin here on f2 pawn. So I can take in g3 in some variations. So uh, according to the computer, white can't uh, resist in this position. So, uh, and basically rook g6 here is not that good because after knight f3, rook g8, g4 is possible now because if knight takes on g4, takes and bishop c8, trying to trap this uh, queen and takes on g4 with the bishop to connect the bishop to the attack, queen e5 is a check. And that is indifference, because we will see the, this variation after rook g7. After rook g7, here is no, 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 no checks. So rook g7, white played uh, knight f3 in that position, uh, rook g8. And if g4 comes here and this variation appears, takes, takes bishop c8, Queen e5 is not a check, and I ca can go with bishop takes g4. And here is a check made like queen e7, bishop f3, king h2, for example, and bishop takes e7, and with the rook g2, the checkmates comes very, very soon. So the attack is non-stop for white. So uh, after rook g8, Ernesto tried to push the bishop to the g5. And here, an interesting moment as well, because Ding needed to calculate it from the beginning, especially before he played g5, that here is 94 is possible, a magnificent move, because it's it's not possible to take on e7, rook g2, king f1, rook f2 checkmate, and if the king is coming to h1, I can go with the knight f2, with the checkmate again, so black pieces, they're doing a magnificent job. And if rook takes e4, for example, I can go with rook takes, takes on g5, takes on g5. The only one move to protect the rook with the queen is queen f3. And after f5, black will take on e4, and it's like an extra bishop in this position for black, completely winning. So in the game, Ernesto tried to play h4 to block the g line, but knight takes, takes, and rook takes g5. A final sacrifice to unlock line for the rook. And this rook versus like these bishops, they're doing a great job against the king. So queen, queen h3 protecting g2, queen f6. So black wants to take on f2 as well. Rook f3 trying to defend this diagonal with the rook. But this position is really losing for white. And Ding, he played here really strong. So let's see how he won. c5. A nice move. The, basically, the idea if white will do some random move, for example, rook e1, I can go with the c4. And if bishop takes c4, queen c6. And here is a double attack to the two pieces. And the bishop comes to a2. It's no longer a bishop. It's like a big pawn here. So c5. Uh, bishop comes to c4 here. This way, check here, check, and queen e4. And it's a double attack. So the white's position is going to be ruined here. b3, check, here, check, f5. He, he doesn't want to take the pawn on c2 because this pawn means nothing right now. He wants to go up with his uh, beautiful passing pounds and create a new queen even. So rook g1, just we don't need to have this on the board with black, checkmate in one, so that's why queen h6, king g2, and king g7. The king comes up from the corner, and he wants to be uh, related to these pawns, because he will participate in the game, and in the final checkmate as well. So rook d1, here, check, here, some checks, f4. Right now we can take on c2 because it's with the check. Rook d3, king comes to the game, king f6. Bishop takes, queen g2, rook f3, Knight is six. Uh, king is six, I'm sorry. And here, white resigned. What is the reason? I just want to play queen g6 with a checkmate. And if bishop comes to f7 like this with the check to protect the g6 square, I'm going with rook e2. And after the king moves, I can just take the rook on f3. And it's completely winning. So 
perfect game from Dean. Really interesting ideas, thin moves, thin plans. And uh, if you will see this game carefully, you definitely will improve your positional understanding of chess. I was happy to produce this game for you. Don't forget to subscribe and left a comment below the video. It will be a pleasure for me. Have a nice day. Goodbye.